Okay, everybody, we're going to give this a try here. Today we're talking about chapter 20, and we're talking about acids and bases. And we're going to talk about some of the general um, terms. An Arrhenius acid is a definition that works for about 95% of the time. And in a, an Arrhenius acid definition, Really what it is, is the acid produces hydrogen ions in an aqueous solution. Okay, so if we put uh, acid in pure water, which uh, would then be an aqueous solution, then we will get protons with their positive charge. Because the proton will be, the hydrogen atom will be without its electron, get, you know, leaving it with that positive charge. So it would look like this. If we put hydrochloric acid into water, then what we get is hydrogen ion plus chlorine ion. Oops. And that's what we see the acid does. Okay, so here's another acid for you. H2SO4, sulfuric acid, battery acid, um, and that's for your car batteries, not your alkaline batteries. Then what we get is we get two hydrogen ions um, plus the sulfate ion. And you can see here the difference between these acids is subscript of one there, subscript of two there, and we can see how that works out on the other side. So in other words, pay attention to this. This one here gives one proton per molecule. This one will give two protons per molecule. Now that'll be uh, uh, part of the way that we distinguish between the two acids, or, or two different kinds of acids here. Um, another common acid is the nitric acid we have here. Put that in water and you'll see that we get uh, a proton plus a negative ion. Okay, so that's the Arrhenius acid. Okay, to give you a definition for Arrhenius base, that is going to be similar. But in this case, it's going to produce, you know, 95% of the time, the definition will work for this, produces hydroxide ions. Okay, so I'll give you a couple examples of that. We all know about uh, sodium hydroxide. If we put that into water, we will get uh, sodium and this hydroxide. Ion. Okay, so if you look up here, we are talking about the hydrogen ions, and that has to do with an acid. And down here, though, we're going to be talking about the hydroxide ions, which have to do with a base. Okay, just another example here might be, uh, you know, potassium hydroxide in water. We're going to get a potassium ion and uh, hydroxide ion. Okay? And we see again here, this is our defining parts of that molecule that talks about it being a base or not. Okay, to kind of bring this around to some properties of acids and bases, if we have a cup of water here, which we all know is HOH, if it's just plain HOH, at all times, uh, there will be molecules that split into the two um, into the two ions. So at all times, there will be a percentage of the water that actually splits and becomes these two ions, H positive and, and OH negative. Now. This splitting and rejoining occurs, you know, simultaneously. So it's not like 
uh, one molecule is going to split and that, that molecule is going to remain split the whole time. It can go in and out of the molecular structure. But at all times there is a little portion of that. And these ions then, by nature, are going to be the same concentration. Or what that means, or what I mean by that is, if I have one molecule and I split it into an H, there's always going to be an OH present at the same time. Now, in regular water, there's not quite enough ions here to cause a, a conducting path. But if I would put in HCl into here, then I would get more ions here. Notice I'm getting more H's, I'm not getting more any more OH's when I put this acid in. That's going to be a defining pattern that we see and use when we do some math. But if I get enough of these ions in here, um, you know, there also will be the chlorine ions as well. For every H plus extra I get, there will be a, a chlorine ion as well. If I get enough of those in there, and I take a light bulb, and we should be able to see a, a demonstration of this, and I attach, I put in an electrode here, and I put in the other electrode here into the water, and then I have a battery, so I can get some movement of electrons. Oops, that would go down here. Then, I can see that there will be light. Okay, so I can light up, a, I can complete a circuit, and what happens is these ions here are arranged in a way that there can be a conduction of electricity from one electrode to the next, which then would complete the circuit and allow the light to shine bright. Now without these extra uh, ions in there from an acid, or this could happen with a base too, then I wouldn't have enough ions just from the water splitting up in order to successfully conduct electricity. Okay, well I know that this, this uh, chapter has quite a few terms in here. Um, the difference between a strong acid base and a weak acid base is generally it's the, uh, this will have a higher percentage of of uh, ions made in water. And so in, in uh, kind of acid base terms, the molecule or salt that we put in in the water that we're considering to be an acid or the base will have more of its pieces will be you know separated and split into these ions. And then in the weak acid, it'd be a lower percentage. A lower percentage of, of ions formed when dissolved or put in water. So that's just kind of a, a general um, definition that seems maybe a little bit uh, confusing, but that's basically what it is there. Okay, so now we talked about the Arrhenius acid. Now we have to talk about the Bronsted Lowry definition. Okay, so the Bronsted Lowry definition, and you have this in your notes, I'm sure, already besides this, if you did your assignment. Um, the acid in a Bronsted Lowry is considered a proton donor. And the base then is considered a proton acceptor. Okay, so by this definition, you cannot have one without the other. So, in other words, if we put HCl into water, 
then what we get on the other side is H three O positive plus a chlorine negative. So which one would be the acid? Well, this one apparently accepted a hydrogen because it has H three now instead of H two. Okay, so by definition, and you can look at this must have donated its, at, or its uh, hydrogen because it's standing alone. So we would consider this an acid and this a base. Okay? Now, by the brownstead laurier definition, we, we can talk about this reaction going both ways. And I already mentioned earlier that a lot of these molecules are going in and out of their ions. And so in, in this case, if we look at it going in this direction, then we can say that this one here is actually donating a hydrogen. So that would be the acid. But when we have it on this side, we call it a conjugate acid. And then this one would be the acceptor or the conjugate base. Okay? So conjugate acid base would be the, on the other side of the equation, and it would be... Um, you know, opposite of what the base molecule was on the front side. Okay, so some more definitions are for you. Let's try another one here. Let's say we have uh, NH3 plus HOH, and we get NH4 on this side plus OH negative. Now, if you look at this one, we can see that this one here is accepting a hydrogen on this side. So we're going to call this the base. And then, by definition of brown cell lowry, this would be the acid because it's donating and it leaves it with the hydroxide ion. Now, isn't that interesting? You see the same molecule up here as we do down here both water. In one case it's an acid, and in the other case it's a base. Okay, so if you go the other way, you can see that this one is going to be donating, so that would be considered the acid, but it's a conjugate acid. And this one would be then the conjugate base. So that property of water is called amphoteric. And that means it can act as either an acid or a base. There's another definition for you.